Hi guys and welcome back to the PE Podcast. I'm delighted to bring you a guest who has been to the Rio Olympics, won gold at the 2018 Commonwealth Games, is going to the Tokyo Olympics, is tipped to win gold and he's also tipped to go on to a very successful professional career afterwards. We're going to find out more about himself, how he deals with pressure, how he overcomes challenges, um, what it's like being an Olympian, how he's preparing for the Tokyo Olympics and hopefully you'll learn something from today's episode that you can apply in your life. So sit back, relax enjoy today's episode. Right then, welcome back to the P podcast. We have an Olympian here with us today, somebody who's won a gold medal at a Commonwealth Games, somebody who has dedicated their life to their sport. I'm going to let him introduce himself in a moment, then we'll talk about his career, we'll talk about his life growing up in school, any adversity he's faced, um, and how he's preparing for the Tokyo Olympics. So welcome, Gamal. Can you, Galal, can you tell me something, please, um, about your life growing up? Um, how, is, how did you find school? How was your experience? Um, any sort of setbacks during school, something for our students to relate to? Um, well, yeah, I went to school at Lot Hall. I don't know if you know where that is. It's, a, it's in Solid Hall. Um, yeah. I lived in Mose at the time, so I had to travel quite far, you know, to go to school. So, um, so yeah, I enjoyed school. Uh, I probably wasn't the smartest, but um, while I was in school, my brothers were boxing. Um, as you know, Cal, uh, he was at the Olympic Games. Um, so I was kind of looking up to him, kind of like um, I wanted to do what he was doing. So um, it probably took my focus a bit away from school, but um, I tried to stick at it. And um, and yeah, it's, obviously I've been to the Olympic Games already and I'm going to another one. So yeah, not too bad. How, how did you find um, being in school and having two sort of you know successful brothers and, and one who was boxing sort of really high level at the time, an, an Olympian? Did that motivate you to get into boxing or was it something that you've always wanted to do? Did you see the success they had and think, I want a bit of that? Or was it something you've always been talented at? Yeah, he's, he's watching them, um, especially Cal, because Cal started off and he started doing quite well. And, and when he went to the Beijing Olympics in 2008, I, can't, I didn't really know what they were. Um, and I think I was, I think, 14 at the time. Um, so I was like, I want to I do that, I do. And... Um, I was a long way off because I had to go and work after school. I had to go to college. I had to, you know, do all those kind of things. But um, yeah, I think I just kept, I kept just stuck at it, and and it, it worked out for me when I was twenty three. Yeah, twenty three. Random question in school: what what were your aims in school? Then did you have a career path you wanted to follow, or did you know you were always going to be a boxer? Did you have any subjects that you really enjoyed that you wanted to do, sort of make a career out of, or how did you find sort of leaving school? What was the transition to college and work like? Um, you know what? I loved sports. I loved uh, football. I loved uh, I loved running. Um, to be fair, school. It, I always wanted to be a footballer, <laughs> but um, I'm pretty small, so I had, I had no chance of being of being a footballer. And then school. I, I enjoyed school, and I'd love to go back back to school now. And I always tell everyone. I always say, um, when I was younger, everyone older than me was telling me you're going to want to go back to school when you're young. So make the most out of it and enjoy it. And I used to hate it. I used to think, no chance. I want to be growing up. I want to grow up and do what I want. But um, now I'd love to go back to school and spend a week or so there. Yeah, I can really relate to that. I remember being in school and playing football at lunchtime and just being around your mates all day. And it was just brilliant. And now yeah. you look back and think, you get a lunch break in, in, in a job now and you think, I wish we could just go and have a kick about it with mates. That's yeah. brilliant. But it's a bit of a novelty, really. I think I say it to a lot of our, our students, a lot, you know, you, you'll miss this. But I suppose when you're at that age, you're thinking, no, I, I, I want to be growing up. I want to have what he's got and they've got. Yeah. Especially with social media at the moment, they're seeing people who are sort of 18, 19. Like the kids mm. are in secondary school going, oh, and they've got a nice car, a nice this, that, earning money. Um, next question then. You say other sports as well as boxing, football, athletics. You're obviously very sporty. In your yeah. boxing career, how did you um, transition then from being a very good amateur to, to going down that Olympic pathway? What... What was the um, what were the factors you think that got you there? So obviously you, you're very talented, but were there other things like that determination, hard work, commitment? What are those factors that have elevated you above those people who are at your level? You know what? I see, I see my story is a bit different because um, it's not, not like my brothers because they've literally come up from 14, 13 and boxed all the way till now. With me, it was I 
started boxing at, I think my first fight was 18. So it's quite old. So at, at that point, I'm already catching up. Um, so yeah, I was 18. But at that time as well, I've got to go to college. I've got to, you know, I've got to maybe get a job in a few years. Um, so I had my first fight at 18. I went to college. I was studying in college um, for two, three years. Um, when I got to 21, I needed a job. I left college. I wanted to get a job. So I found a job at, you know, Land Rover, the factory, you know, in Solio. I got a job there. Um, I worked there for, I think, two, three years. So I was 23, I think, when I left. And I remember telling my boxing coach, I was like, um, this is for my amateur club. I was like, I've my last year now, I'm going to give it this last push and then I'm going to just leave it. And he said to me, he said, um, this was a year before the Olympic Games. And he said to me, no, you can you can go to Olympic Games in, in Rio. And I thought, he's crazy. There's no chance I can go to Olympics in Rio it's next year. And I'm still working in the factory. And I had no chance of being on the, the Great Britain team. And then I did one championships my last year. Um, I got an assessment for Great Britain. Um, I did well in, in those. And then I think this was now November 2015. Um, but I had a few issues with work uh, because I had to be up Sheffield full time, training with GB. But I was working uh, four or five nights a week. So, um, yeah, GB spoke with Land Rover. They kind of sorted it out. And then I started training up Sheffield. Um, and then, quite a long story short, I went to a qualifier and then qualified for the Olympics and then I, I left work and yeah, I, I left work and then that was it the rest of history and I just haven't been to work since right. all in the space of a year it's incredible. literally yeah in the space from October 2015 to April I was qualified in, in April 2016 I was yeah I was at Sheffield just I just left work I was in I was in a sabbatical leave um so I'd say it weren't even really talent. It was more drive and hunger because, I, you know what, I used to hate my job. I used to hate going, I used to work night shift um, and I used to hate it. I used to dread going to work. And uh, I used to look at my brothers and think, oh, I wish I could just go and do boxing like them and get paid and uh, not have to worry about work and everything. And yeah, it worked out for me. That's incredible. It's quite a motivational story, I think, for some of our, our students that, you know they get you could end up in a job that you don't enjoy and you, you've got to keep pushing yourself if there's something you want to achieve like yourself boxing yeah. you kept pushing even at sort of 23 but a lot of people look at it and the story is more especially in football at the moment in terms of Jamie Vardy he was at non-league clubs and he kept pushing and pushing yeah. and pushing and he's made it to the top and that's obviously the sort of trajectory that you're on at the moment what was that yeah. first Olympics like then going from a year before working the night shift at Land Rover and then a year's time you're in Brazil what's that like at the Rio Olympics you know what? It was crazy because, like, I was literally, I was literally in a factory like six, seven months before, and then I'm literally in the Olympic Village with like all these major athletes, like Usain Bolt and Andy Murray speaking to me, and you know Mo Farah uh, saying hello to me, and it's like six, seven months ago I was in the factory in Land Rover, and um, but I worked hard in that six, seven months. I was so driven. I was literally like just a madman just trying to get ahead of the other boys and, and and everything and and yeah it was a crazy like a crazy um difference to working at Land Rover to, to them being in real the Olympic Games on the telly and being on the news and my face everywhere it was um yeah it was surreal I'll bet, I'll bet. um what were your results and how was it um going from sort of that Olympics then you've obviously won medals at European Championships, you've won stuff at the Commonwealth Games, gold medal. Um, how, how is that feeling? You know, you've worked really hard for it for years and years and years and you get that gold medal. What what keeps you pushing for more? Because obviously, we spoke about this before, I've heard from people that, you know, you've got the ability and the talent to have turned professional already. Um, and obviously, that's, everyone looks at professional boxers and they think, oh, there's money involved. You've obviously got deeper values than just money. You're not just driven by yeah. money. You want to go and get that gold medal. What's driving you to um, to chase that Olympic dream and get that gold as opposed to, you know, tying that professional deal and fighting on, on, for money? Basically, uh, well, when, obviously, like I said, when I got into the Olympics, the first Olympics, I was pretty new. I'd been there for like four months. 
So people do cycles where they stay four years, go to Olympics and then leave. Um, I was literally like a newbie. I'd had that, not, not that many fights. Um, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to add a word with my GV boxing. And I said, I'm going to stick it out to the next Olympics. I'm going to do the Commonwealth Games. I'm going to do the European Championships. I'm going to go to another Olympics. And it's worked out that way for me now. And um, obviously, we're out for, the, for the, the another year for the, obviously, with the pandemic. It's been a bit of a, you know, it's been a bit stressful and, uh, it's another year, but what can I do? I've just I set out to go to these Olympics, and I've got to stick at it, and um, I'm sure hopefully it'll work out. Yeah, it must be really difficult in terms of you. You've prepared for it, and then you've had that extra setback and to wait another year to get your chance. Um, leading on from that, I've got a question from your brother Gamal. He's he's asked me to ask, um, have you come to terms yet that in uh, four to five months' time your life is going to change completely? I think we all know what that means. You're going to go to Tokyo. Yeah. You're going to get that gold medal. Have you come to terms with what, everything that's waiting for you after the Olympics? Well, hopefully, I'm trying. You know what? At the minute, I'm training. I'm training my butt off at the minute. You know, um, I'm up Sheffield. I'm I'm in Ireland next week, and then I'm in Serbia the week after that, training and fighting. Um, I hope so. I, you know what? I train hard. Um, they know what what I train like because they train with me. Um, I'm just, literally I'm just enjoying enjoying it at the moment um, because I, I remember what it was like a few years ago, you know, working and stuff, and I, I used to hate it. So I'm I'm just enjoying it at the at the minute because it's not going to be here forever. Um, yeah, I've just got to take all my stride, and hopefully I can bring that comment back. Um, yeah, I hope um, he's right. Go on, sorry. Yeah, I hope he's right in what he says. No, I'm sure he will be. I love that attitude, and we seem. I seem to see it from some of the podcasts I listen to that those that have had the, the sort of easy life all the way through in terms of um, being in elite sport from a very young age to the top, and they've always been supported by it. And they say that almost going out and, and doing training is almost like a, a bit of a chore, some a bit like a job. But people have come into that um, that elite environment at a later age. They enjoy it more, and they tend to yeah. have that longevity and. You know, you've we've, well, everyone's gone through that pandemic recently, and I think some people potentially took their foot off the gas a little bit. Whereas someone yeah. like yourself, you know, you, you're working at Land Rover, and you, now you're still involved, and you're still going to the Olympics because it's been relatively a short period of time. You're still driven to go and chase that medal. Um, next question I had was um, boxing. Then it's an individual sport, so at the end of the day, it's you versus another person. But you've yeah. got a massive team behind you. Then I know in the summer I'll be sat at home watching it on TV and watching the Olympics and most of the people in the country will be too. Do you think about that? How do you deal with that pressure? Cause I had a guest on recently, which was Karen Carney. And I was saying, um, not to necessarily her playing career, but when she's worked in the media, how does she yeah. deal with knowing so many people are watching and, and waiting on every word? How do you deal with that? You know, the country are behind you, your team's behind you, but at the end of the day, it's you versus another person. Do you have any coping mechanisms with that or, or do you just do it for yourself? You know what? It, to be fair, for me, it drives it drives me on more. Do you know what I mean? Because um, these people watching, supporting you, most of them want you to do well. Um, I remember going in, in the last Olympics and I was fighting the reigning world champion in my second fight, and I remember walking out to go and fight, and I remember thinking, everyone at home is watching this now. Like everyone that knows me is pretty much watching this. Um, I don't know about any of el anybody else, but I know everyone that knows me my friends, my family are watching me now. And um, it just made me want to do better. You don't want to let people down. Um, so, yeah, it made, me, it made me want to do better because these people want you to do well. Um, obviously, everyone supporting Team GB, they're all behind me. Um, everyone at GB Boxing, um, my old school teachers, some still message me now, my old P teachers. Um, I know they're all watching, so um, it kind of drives me on in a way. It doesn't make me shy away or get nervous. I've already got a, it's already a big task for me, and it's already hard enough going in the ring to have a fight. So, um, any more energy I can receive, and you know, anything that can make me more driven and more thinking about the task ahead, it, it, it's better for me. That's interesting. Um, and building on that a little bit in terms of fight day. So, what is your routine like? Looking in from the outside, I've never. 
box. Um, I've got no idea what it's like in the morning. How do you prepare for it? Are you still preparing in terms of watching videos? Obviously, you'd have done a lot of preparing before, but are you still recapping on analysis or are you just relaxing, knowing what you've got to do because you've put the work in beforehand? How do you prepare on the day of a, a big event? Uh, on the day of a fight, basically, well, you know what? All the hard work's basically been done before. I've trained months, some months, weeks and weeks before. I've analysed my opponent already. Um, sometimes you don't know who you're fighting until the day before. So um, on the morning of a fight, obviously we have to make weight. So I'll be starving the night before and be really thirsty. Um, I'll have to get up weighing, um, make the weight, obviously. And then I'll just be relaxing, really. Eat, relax. I'll do a video analysis with the Great Britain team. Um, they're at GB Boxing. See what I've got to do with my opponent. Um, they'll come up with strategies and statistics, like what are, what are his statistics here and things like that. And yeah, we just go from there and we come up with a plan how we're going to win. And um, and yeah, that's it. We just go and we do our best to win. And most of the time, uh, we do win. So uh, thank God. And then what what is it like that that immediate that very short term before the fight, that walking, being in the arena, walking to the ring. What's going through your mind? Because I look at, at people walking into the rings and I think, I wonder what you're thinking. What are you thinking about? Are you just getting yourself pumped up? But then in sport, there's obviously over arousal and getting to a point where it becomes too much. How do you keep yourself grounded? But then obviously have that adrenaline and use that to your advantage on that very short period between sort of leaving the dressing room and getting into the ring. You know what? The, the worst thing for me is when we're leaving our hotel or where we're staying and we're going to the venue, you're just constantly thinking about, I literally go through the fight in my head about 30 times. I literally go through the, go through the fight in my head 30 times. Um, so I listen to music, try and relax me. And yeah, I just, I literally do go through the fight in my head. And I think a lot of fighters do. They try and like visualize what they're going to do and what the opponent's going to do. Um, but it's very nerve-wracking when you're warming up and you're getting your kit on and you're getting your hands wrapped. Um, you just, you kind of, it's it's a very anxious feeling. Very anxious. You kind of, um, that's why a lot of boxers suffer with anxiety. Because um, you're always anxious. And um, as soon as I get to the ring, the, the um, nervousness just goes. It's a weight lifted off my shoulders. And yeah, it's time to fight then. I can relate to that a little bit. I don't, box but I, I race cars and carts and whatnot and I get that feeling in terms of that waiting before you go out and do your warm-up lap I'm sat there and I'm, I'm thinking what yeah. this could happen that could happen the second you get going you know you, you almost a sudden like a like you say a weight lifted from your shoulders and you get to relax and you can get into your sort of routine um as somebody who's never set, stepped foot into a ring what's as soon as that bell goes what are you trying to are you, are you, you're saying that you only get, in some occasions, a very short period to adapt and prepare for an opponent. Uh, yeah. When you're coming up against somebody, you find out the day before. What's that first round like? Are you sussing them out, or, or are you there to put your sort of? Are you there to play to your skills or your advantages, or are you looking for their weaknesses? I'm just doing what I normally do. Um, you know, it's a weird feeling because it's almost like you know when you're almost like it's autopilot. You just do things on instinct. Sometimes you don't even think about it. You just do them. Um, and sometimes I come out the ring afterwards and I don't even know how I did that. Or I watch it backwards. I watch it back and I'm like, I don't even know how I did that. And um, that's what I was like when you're in a fight. You literally, you're on, you're on guard, you're on your point. And you just literally, you just every moment, you're just really sharp. And, and that's just the, that's because the nervousness and the butterflies you have and keeps you on guard and it keeps you ready and sharp and, it's literally like autopilot because yeah, I, watch, I watch it back and I'm like, oh, I didn't even know I did that. Oh, why did I do that? You know what I mean? You don't, you don't remember things. You don't, um, it's, it's very hard to explain. I'm, I'm sure you'll have it in a sport you do. Um, I know maybe if, if you watch rugby, I know rugby players probably have the same, football players. Um, but yeah, boxing man, it's just, it's, it's, it's a fight, isn't it? Basically, it's just, he's trying to knock my head up and I'm trying to knock his head up. Yeah, I can, I can see that because I, I watch. Uh, I love watching boxing, and sometimes you watch people get into a ring, and you think the most dangerous people. And there's a fight recently with Povetkin and White, and they almost went at each other from the start. And I think they both have the ability to knock each other out. And it was really sort of 
yeah. it was quite a dangerous approach whereas you see some fighters get in the ring and it's the, the first couple of rounds they're, they're just sort of warming into it and they're just sussing each other out and seeing what's happening um whereas i think in my opinion the most exciting way to watch a boxing match is when both people just think right i'm gonna beat you and that's the end of it i'm not gonna wait and see what you mistakes you make i'm gonna go for you and finish this quickly and um especially in the sort of the, the further you sort of go down in terms of the weight the quicker it is yeah. and i watch it and i just can't believe how quick some of you boxers are especially it's sort of in your weight class yeah. how do you move so fast and how do you keep going for such a long period of time i've been in punch bags before for three minutes at a time and i'm I do two rounds of it and I'm blowing after. I've got nothing left. So the yeah. your athletic ability is obviously really immense. Um, and I said at the start, I, was, I wasn't going to ask you where you see yourself in two years' time, but what's your, um, what are you thinking? Where do you think you're going to be in two years' time? Where do you hope to be? Um, well, obviously, the Olympics, they're in three months' time now. Um, when, we're already in April. So in three months' time, I'm hoping... That I'm Olympic champion. Um, that's one box to be ticked. And then obviously I'm turning pro after that. Um, I would like to be in two years, maybe Olympic champion and fighting for a world title, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe fighting for a world title. But my main goal is the next three months. That's a um, big statement, but obviously elite sports people have big goals that they're not going to sit back and think, I just want to do this. I just want to go. It's not about, and I get a bit, a bit frustrated when I worked for a very short period in a primary school doing PE. And it's very yeah. much the, um, everyone gets to have a chance and everyone, everyone's a winner attitude. And yeah, everyone gets to take part. But I think that's a r really rubbish way of learning in, in life that not everyone's a winner. You go for a job interview, yeah. only one person's going to get it. And as an elite sports person, you're showing that, your goal is to win win the Olympic gold and go for a world title. It's not, I want to go to Tokyo and enjoy it and, and experience it. You've got bigger goals than that. I find that um, really motivational, really. I can apply that to myself as well a little bit. Um, any setbacks and adversity that you've faced then in your boxing career or earlier on in life? What what are your the setbacks or, and how have you overcome them? You know what? I've had loads of setbacks. Like, I've... Yeah, people say, you've won the Commonwealth Games, uh, you've been to Olympics, but I've lost fights on the way. I lost in Olympics. Um, I've lost in fights in between that too. They just don't get, um, they don't get shown. Maybe people don't see them. I'll obviously tell people I've lost it or didn't win there, but they don't get celebrated like a win does. Um, I've lost loads of times. Even, see, like you were saying earlier, um, some Sometimes I would see when I before I got an Olymp Olympic team, I didn't think I was going to be there. Um, I did my best. I trained hard. I did everything I could to try and get there. But in my mind, I wasn't thinking I'm going to be on the Olympic team. I'm going to go to the Olympics. Remember, like I said earlier, my coach said to me, you can go to the Olympics next year. Like I, la I laughed at him saying that. Do you know what I mean? I didn't think in my head. I didn't think, yeah, I can go to the Olympics. I can, I can do that. Like, there were things that were so far away. I wasn't even thinking about those. But one thing I did do is I tried my best. Do you know what I mean? I, I put everything into it. So um, when people say, oh, you have to believe you're going to do something, sometimes it, that isn't always the case. Do you know what I mean? Because I know I didn't think I was going to go to the Olympics. And, and I did get there. But that was more me, I think, trying my best and putting everything into it. Even if I didn't believe I could do it, I still did, did my best. Um, but yeah, back to you about setbacks. I've had loads of setbacks. Um, I've lost in numerous fights. Um, but I've always come back. I've always thought, okay, what can I do better there? Trained harder. Gone over the video analysis and then come back and ultimately it's um, tell me for my next fight. How did you get over that then in terms of um, how do you get over a loss or a defeat? Do you analyse your own performance? Do you look at the opponent and go, on, on the day he was just better than me? Or do you think, actually, I can be better than him? It was my mistake. I've done this and that wrong. How do you how do you analyse them performances then? Sometimes it's just... Um, sometimes it can be the opponent's just better. Um, to be fair, I'm going to say, I, it's, it's very rare that I fight someone and the opponent is better on, on the day. It's very rare. It's maybe happened once or twice where that person was just better on the day. It's normally because I haven't stuck to a game plan or 
it's been very close, but they've just took the decision. Um, so normally when I fight, I do normally stick to game plans and I'm always okay. It's very rare. Um, but I just think, you know what? It is what it is. I've lost now. Um, and what can I do to be better next time? But I think that's that's been with age. When I was younger, I used to get upset. When I was 22, 23, I'm, I used to cry after a loss. <laughs> now that I'm 28, I just think, you know what? I need to, I need to do better. I need to um, improve and yeah, just move on from there. I find that really interesting. I try and tell some of our kids at school, and I worked out a little analogy that um, if you got, I think it was something like however hours, however many minutes there are on a day, you get a pound. It's something like thirty-six thousand pound a day or three thousand six hundred pound a day, and somebody yeah. ruins ten minutes of it. Are you going to look back and chase that ten pound to try and get it back, or are you just going to yeah. move on? think oh, I've lost it at the end of the day, move on. I've still got this to look forward to. And I think that's a really positive attitude to have. Because I think if you get focused on a negative and you look back and you, you know, criticize yourself too much, you almost have that cycle or cycle of negativity, right? It's yeah, best yeah. just to get out of that cycle, move on to the next thing, look forward to what's coming up next. Um, to finish off then, any advice for any future Olympians or elite sport people, sports people watching? I think you're a perfect example that doesn't always come instantly. You're not, some of yeah. our students at school at the moment might not even know what sport they want to get into. You're saying you're boxing at 18. We've got yeah. 14, 15 year olds that only play football. And I get so frustrated and think there's more to it. Go and do something else. Try something else. Any advice for those people, even looking for a sport or those elite people will look into the future? You know what? Um, people think it happens like it's like it's some kind of fairy tale thing where you kind of have to do it from 13, 14. You're going to be a superstar growing up, but it doesn't always work out like that. Because I remember in school, I was there was no chance I was going to be a boxer and go to Olympic Games. It, I was 20, 23 when I went to Olympics. So it was like, I'd already grown up and I'd got a job. I'd done everything. So I think people get, um, what's the word now? Um, they get uh, dis disheartened, they get disheartened um, and they think, oh, you know what? I'm not going to be able to do that. It's too late or uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get a job. I, I, I have to get a job. I was literally in a factory working at 21, 22, and I was miles away from the Olympics. Um, I think you have to be persistent, stay persistent. I think work hard. I literally trained so hard. Um, and you need, sometimes you need a bit of luck too. And um, yeah, I literally just sacrificed everything for boxing. I wanted to go to Olympics and, and it, and it worked out for me. And I'm sure there's plenty of people, like you were saying, Jamie Vardy. He was at a non-league, you say he was at a non-league club. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was at a non-league club for years and I'm sure he was just persistent, persistent. And, and I don't think anyone would have said to him, you're going to be playing for England and and Leicester City in a, in a few years. No one would have ever believed it. And there's loads of people in, not just in athletics, in life, that people say, I don't think he's going to be there in four or five of his time. And, they do end up getting there so I think you have to just have belief really belief belief in yourself definitely yeah I think a key word you mentioned there was sacrifice as well you know, you've got yeah. to give up things to, to chase something um some of our students I'm going to try and bring it back to an academic side in terms of you know, I've got a piece of coursework to hand in and we we set yeah. something called a target grade and we try and hold people accountable to it but it's not because I try and sort of um impl implement this as much as I can but it's not because we're trying to be annoying and go, oh, you need to do this and that. It's, it's developing those values as well as discipline and sacrifice, you know, giving up a, a kickabout with your friends over the park, maybe just once to get a piece of coursework done and you've hit your target, you can move on to the next thing. And those little values, I know they're a little bit novel in school, they think oh, it's only a piece of coursework, but if you can get those sorts of values for your life young and you can carry them through, you can go anywhere with it as, you, as you've shown. And there's, like you say, there's plenty of other examples. Um, yeah. I want to say thank you, Galal. I can't, um thank you enough for giving up your time you're obviously really busy training you've got the, one of the biggest events in the world if not the biggest world event coming up in a few months time and just to give up half an hour has been brilliant so uh, no worries, thank you a lot for doing that i, I really appreciate it and no worries anytime it was good chatting to you it's good if i can give back a little something then i'm 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 happy with doing that you know what hey, I mean? you, yeah you've definitely done that mate thank you so welcome back guys i think we've learned a lot from that episode about perseverance pursuing a goal, pursuing a target, 
And at 23, he had his opportunity to go to the Olympics. And as he was saying, you know, getting into boxing late, although it seemed like a bit of a setback at the start, he's still boxing at the elite level. He's going to have a professional career and he could still go on and win gold at the Olympics. I think you'll sort of join me in thanking him for coming on, but also in supporting him and getting behind him at the Tokyo Olympics this year. Next episode will be out next week with ex-Birmingham Watford and West Bromwich Albion defender Paul Robinson and his wife Caroline. So I hope you look forward to that. Until then, have a great week and I'll see you for the next episode.